Hi there, Virgo, and welcome back to Bon Echo Tarot. I really appreciate you coming back. Um, I have to say that I need to apologize for completely, completely getting derailed by the eclipse. I had planned to put out reports for all signs, including extended readings. I got through half of the zodiac, and that was it. The eclipse forced me to completely reconstruct my life, which I'm happy for now, but it was a total pain when it was happening. So at any rate, it's taken me about a week <laughs> to get things back on track. So I should be posting a lot more regular now. <laughs> uh, at least I hope so, please. You know, it's uh, these energies have just been unbelievable. So Virgo, what can I tell you about the astrology for you right now? Um, let's see here. Looks like your cards want to come out as I tell you this. So for you, Virgo, um, Mercury is retrograde in your 11th house. So that is community, friendships, um, and that sort of thing. Um, and so the solar eclipse happened in the same house. So you may have seen reunions. Um, there could have been, um, there could have been like a situation where you lost a really close friend because either they left or there was a breakdown in the friendship, but now there's a new friend coming in. So, um, theoretically, platonically, but you know, it, depending on what other placements you have in your chart, it, it could also be around a relationship. But the 11th house really is more about community and platonic friendships. So let's see what the cards have to say for you, Virgo. Um, the other thing to remember is that like Gemini, uh, Mercury is your ruler. So, um, so it, it packs a little bit extra punch for you. And so this particular Mercury retrograde is happening in Cancer. So, um, Cancer, uh, let's see here. So that's your, your 11th house. So you're going to see stuff that was happening around the solar eclipse and solstice, kind of, you know, the echoes of it, or you got a preview as to what needed your focus during this particular Mercury retrograde. So, um, so yeah, so you're going to see these themes and what else do we have going on for Virgo right now? Um, I guess not a whole lot. So thankfully you're one of the signs that isn't being focused on in terms of the planets. So as I continue to lay the cards out for your reading. And two more for Virgo for July 2020. Okay, so surrounding energies for Virgo for July. Oh, look at that, the Ace of Cups. So it's a new beginning for you in love. It also could be a new beginning for you in self-love. So let's see what the cards have to say. Oh, look at you. Looks like you're being single. Because that's very much a Virgo card, the Nine of Pentacles. And it really is the single card. It's the card for being content with your singlehood. Because you really have everything you need. As opposed to codependent relationships. Your obstacle is the Knight of Wands. So the Knight of Wands is often a player type energy. Someone who comes in and out of your life and you know, often with like a lot of passion, but often with a lot of chaos too. So the foundation for your reading is the King of Swords. So um, this could be about boundaries, setting boundaries with this fire sign um, and with a certain amount of authority. So in the past, recent past, you may have received some messages from someone. Uh, it could have been an Aries. What's crowning your reading is the fool. So um, this situation could be revolving around um, an Aries, but it also could be a fresh new perspective for you 
you know, as, again, I'm seeing very much this theme of singlehood. All right, so in your near future, we have the Queen of Swords. So again, an air sign, uh, a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, possibly, um, somewhere. And, I mean, when you've got the King and Queen of Swords, you know, you could be dealing with a pair you know this this could be working out boundaries and clarity within a relationship with a fire sign you are the knight of swords uh oh so perhaps you're confronting or perhaps you're having to lay down your boundaries fairly aggressively. In your environment, you've got the Queen of Cups. So this could be a water sign, uh, Cancer, Pisces, or Scorpio. Um, someone who is emotional, um, but they're not that open with their feelings. And then in your hopes and fears, you have the Nine of Wands. So there's a certain level of exhaustion that you're feeling or you know that you could just get a break that you wish you could just get a break from fantastic virgo you couldn't have a better final outcome card the magician you're making stuff happen so let's see here i think what i'm going to do is i'm just going to lay down one card to clarify each card in this spread and see what other kind of details to this story emerges. So I'm going to just lay all the cards out and then reveal them one by one. card and Queen of Swords please. And for the Queen of Cups. Okay. okay. Alright, well, I've seen that. Why not? All right. So, surrounding energies at this level is the Three of Cups. So, there could be a celebration happening. There could be a reunion. Any number of things. So, clarifying the central card of the Nine of Pentacles is the Judgment card. Judgment card can represent a Scorpio. It can also represent um, speaking your truth. Uh, making an announcement. It can also be a definitive decision around something. And the Knight of Wands is being clarified by the Queen of Pentacles. So your obstacle is the Queen of Pentacles or Perhaps there's an earth sign in your life who is a bit of a player. A Taurus Virgo or Capricorn. So for the King of Swords, in your foundation, you have the Six of Cups clarifying it. So this could be a situation with an air sign that's actually karmic. Um, and... In this recent past, whatever message you got was the truth. Oh my. Okay, so, and then the Fool, which is crowning your reading. Let's see. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, 
So it looks as though you have had some words for an Aries in your life. I mean, look, you got the Fool card, Aries. The Emperor, Aries. You see, there's a, there's a big mirror of things happening here. So, um, in your short-term outcome, uh, there could be... You could be clarifying. Like, you could have said things in haste and were a little bit more harsh than you actually wanted to be. Um, and so, it's like you're, you're coming back. You're circling back to have the same conversation, but with cooler heads prevailing. So, as I said, we've got... The Emperor is clarifying you or clarifying I'm seeing this as being you being the confrontational energy towards the Emperor in your environment with the Queen of Cups is clarified by the Nine of Pentacles which is the central part of your reading so um, So, this person in your environment, if it is a water sign, you know, they're, they're in a place where they're, they're, they're sufficient, they're, they're self-sufficient. You could be learning something from this water sign um, who is possibly mirroring you at this point. And in your hopes and fears, we have the Nine of Wands. So this is exhaustion. And this is, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, you are not seeing an opportunity that's right in front of you. Uh, you know, because you're so tired. As you've been, you know, in confrontational spots, you don't like that. Um, and you just want to rest. You you just want to relax, not relax. Like this is like a soul tired kind of kind of feeling. And it's possible that the answer to this is right in front of you, but you can't see it because of basically looking at what you don't have, as opposed to what's yours because the divine is offering it to you. So the magician, what are you manifesting, dear Virgo? You're manifesting a love relationship. You know, um, I don't see the two of cups in your reading. Uh, so it's like, and with the lover's card, you know, these are two people who are divinely connected. Um, usually because there's karmic stuff to be worked out. Um, they're connected by the divine, but they are not connected physically. There's a big mountain between them. And so... As you manifest this situation, you may find that there are limitations and that your attitude towards everything really does need to change um, because you're missing something. You're missing something here. Something that is available to you. So... Virgo, I hope you found this reading helpful. If you did find that it resonated with you, you can follow the link below in the description box to take you to my Patreon site, where a subscription gets you access to all extended readings. So, and much more as time goes on. Uh, I'm just getting started, but I can't tell you how much I appreciate your support. So, um, at any rate, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And... 
I'll see you over at Patreon, and if not, we'll see you again here. And for, yeah, your grief is going to motivate you. Your grief around something is going to motivate you. There you go. To become more abundant than you've ever been before. <laughs>